Hello my friends. My name is Bot Mathematician, and this is Holomancer. Today we have prepared a list of the worst legendary and epic cards that we will lose in April after the release of the Rise of Shadows. After that, you can make the difficult decision of whether or not to disenchant cards which are rotating into wild. We will try to help you with this decision. Sorry, I have a few questions from the Gadgets and Gazette. Yes, of course. Ask away. Are you psychics? Can you look into the future? After all, every murloc in Azeroth knows that some cards can get new synergies in the future. Yes, I mean no. We are not psychics, we just collect statistics. And yes, you are right, sometimes with new sets some old cards get new synergies. Certainly nobody can ever predict whether a certain card will become playable in the future. If you're playing wild format a lot, the safest approach is to never disenchant anything. In general, we will lose 71 legendary cards and 85 epic cards. Most of these cards are not competitively viable. And let's face it, many of these cards will never find their place in the game. If you have a small collection of cards and want to keep the option of playing in wild, disenchanting bad legendary and epic cards might be a good decision. Also, you can consider getting rid of every card if you don't plan to play in wild at all. But you must always remember that you are then limiting your opportunities in brawls and solo adventures. If you disenchant a legendary card you will gain 400 dust. You get 100 dust for an epic card. This is only 25% of the total cost. In other words, to craft one legendary card, you need to get rid of four legendary cards. So, how did you manage to determine the worst cards? Oh, thanks for asking. To do this, we have to find the average rate of popularity for all legendary and epic cards, based on the results of two years of availability in standard. Do you think that this data is enough? In order to draw more accurate conclusions, we would like to have the same rate of popularity for wild, but unfortunately we don't have the opportunity to explore the wild format as closely as standard. The only thing we could do was add information on current popularity in wild for the last two weeks from hsreplay.com. And so, let's go to our list, and talk about legendary cards. We have divided all the cards into six different categories, according to their popularity. Each category received a number of stars. The less stars the category has, the safer the disenchanting. In some cases there are exceptions to this principle, but we will turn your attention on it. Let's start with the worst cards. Unfortunately, these six cards open our list. According to the results of the Mammoth and Raven years, their average popularity is zero. Of course, you could see some of these cards on the ladder, presumably in some fun, meme, experimental decks or in non-popular versions of the popular archetypes. Over the past two weeks, only 0.03% of standard decks contained these cards. In the wild mode, these cards have an average 0.06% popularity. What about Blood Queen Lanithal? Let's look at this card in more detail. Right now this card is more popular in wild mode, where it has 0.4% popularity. In standard, it's included in some version of Zoo Warlock and Discard Warlock. We believe in the potential of cards that are now showing good results in wild mode. We consider that they are more viable, and more likely to find spots in decks in the future than cards, that have not even been used in standard mode. Now let's move on to the second category of cards. These include single star cards. These cards, unlike the previous ones, saw the matter game for a while. With some of them, the players experimented immediately after the release of a new expansion, and on others after nerfs. But the main thing that unites them is their popularity was very small and they had no influence on the game. For this reason, the average popularity of these cards is only 0.02% according to HS Replay statistics, only about 0.1% of all decks contain these cards right now in Wild and Standard. The next category is 2 stars cards. These cards were more noticeable in the meta game, and they appeared about 10 times more often than single star cards. Most of these cards had found their place in niche meta decks for some time, then disappeared. Archbishop Benedictus occupies a special place in this group. Despite very poor results in standard mode, this card has a high level of popularity in wild. 
On average, 1.5% of all decks contain it. And now let's look at the following category. All these cards had a Morse table, though not very high level of popularity. But these are actually playable cards, which on average have from 0.6% to 1% popularity. The most popular of them is King Togwaggle, but in the wild format, this card shows very bad results. We can highlight three other cards that may have some potential in the future. The first is Open the Way Gate, the legendary mage quest. This card had the attention of players, although it disappeared for some time from the meta game. Now players are using it again. Awaken the Makers is another quest, that is more powerful in wild mode. And of course there is Hemet, an important yeah. combo card for Mechathun decks, which has 2.5% popularity in the wild mode. The fifth group is occupied by 4 star cards. These cards found their place in decks, and throughout most of the time they were in the standard meta game. The peak popularity of some reached 6%. All of these cards are interesting and have the potential to take a place in some wild decks. We want to draw your attention to some of them. The first card is Grumble. In the past, this elemental has occupied an important place in Shutterwalk Shaman. Now this card is used in Elemental Shaman, and it has 3% popularity in wild. The second card is King's Bane. This legendary weapon has very useful effect for aggressive pirate decks. Today, this card has 4% popularity in wild mode and only 0.2% in standard mode. If you like to play rogue, you should definitely keep this card in your collection. And last but not least is the 6th category, the 5 star cards. These 20 cards deserve special attention. For this reason, we dedicated a separate video to them. In this video, we briefly talked about each of these cards. In our opinion, most of these cards don't deserve to be disenchanted. Do not miss it. You will find the link in the description. And now it is time to announce the legendary cards for which the community will miss the most. These include Deathstalker Rexer and Frost Lich Jaina, but the main favorite according to your comments is the Lich King. Guys, thanks for your activity. Let's take a quick look at epic cards. These 24 cards can be considered absolute rubbish. Their current total popularity for both wild and standard modes is zero. The following seven cards are slightly better than the previous ones, but the average popularity of these cards slightly more than zero. According to actual statistics, on average only 0.1% of all decks contain these cards right now in wild. And now let's look at the following category. Most of these cards found their place in niche meter decks for a short time and then disappeared. But we want to draw your attention to two Warlock cards. These are Blood Bloom and Cataclysm. These cards have similar purposes as they are included in the Mechathun archetype, which is very popular in the wild format. The next category is 3 star cards. All of these 7 cards had very low levels of popularity, but we could call them playable. On average for all of this time, they have from 0.4% to 1% popularity in the standard mode. Separately, we want to highlight Doomerang. This card, as well as Kingsbane, is essential to the Pirate Rogue deck, which is very popular in the wild. Let's now look at 4 star cards. They had an average popularity from 1 to 2% in standard. These cards took their place in different decks, and most of the time were in the meta game. Most of these cards are used in the wild mode and are included in 1% of all decks, but two of them have radically different information. The first card is Nomferatu. Despite the rare use of this card in standard mode, in wild, Warlock uses it much more often. The second card is Obsidian Statue. This card is crazy good for Priest. Thanks to the crazy popularity of the Big Priest archetype, this card is used in 8% of all wild decks. In standard mode, it was used much less frequently. And the last category is the top 20 cards that have been the most popular in standard mode for the past 2 years. Yeah. These are definitely very powerful cards that may have potential for the future. Some of them have already proven their strength in the wild. According to our data, 21% of players will disenchant all cards. If you are a radical player, we call upon you. Please think it over again. Leave at least the cards that now have high rates in the wild format. In any case, no one but you should make the decision. 
We only hope that our statistics could help you a little. I hope that I can publish a text version of this list very soon in our newspaper. Look for the link in the description. And I have the last question, how do you comment on the latest survey results? This is a very interesting question. In the last video we asked, how many of the best legendary cards do you have? The results surprised us a lot. Only 30% of all respondents had almost all of these cards, and 24% only half. Although according to my data, the overwhelming majority of our viewers are players who have been playing for a long time. Unfortunately, we do not fully understand all the factors that prevent players from having a relevant collection. For this reason, the disenchanting of some cards is probably a good opportunity to accumulate resources before the meta updating. Finally, we want to ask our traditional question. Do you plan on pre-purchasing the new expansion? This time we are waiting for a record expensive pre-order. We created a YouTube poll. Find the button on the screen, and please vote. Also share your opinion in the comments. Alright, that's all for today. Thank you for being with us. And special thanks to Chris for text editing. We will meet in new videos. Good luck.